He's a babyface teenage rapper accused of murder who went on the run from the feds. Now, TK has one of the hottest songs in the country. So, is there a line between real life and rap lyrics? TK's real life race was with the U.S. Marshals Fugitive Task Force, who labeled him a violent fugitive. In late March, facing a murder charge as a juvenile, he hit the road. For three months, he was making music about being on the run while actually being on the run. In my exclusive interview with his high-powered entertainment attorney, James McMillan, he tells me TK is first and foremost a very young but very focused artist. Clearly, he took a risk by uh, clipping his ankle bracelet and um, going on the run, but simultaneously, he had the awareness to you know, uh, make this video and this song at the same time. On June 30th, the day was captured by U.S. Marshals in New Jersey. Takei's manager released the race song and video. It's gone viral with more than 40 million views. The song is so popular, it broke into the Billboard Hot 100 chart. This generation of kids is like really savvy. They're really savvy about and aware of technology and um, appearance and what, how you can affect the world basically by the press of a button or with one visual or with one song. Taymor Take McIntyre's legal problems are much more complicated. He's charged along with six others in a home invasion that left a 21-year-old man dead. He's also reportedly implicated in another murder while on the run, as well as the brutal assault of a 65-year-old man. Take's criminal attorney Trent Lofton tells us Mr. McIntyre wholeheartedly denies these charges and allegations against him, and his entire legal team look forward to our future trial and maintain our innocence. We are certain when all of the evidence is presented, Mr. McIntyre will be exonerated. A judge ruled he must be tried as an adult, making the stakes that much higher. So is TK ushering in a new era of gangster rap? Let's find out what our panel has to say. And joining us to talk about this, Rob Markman. He's a hip-hop artist. His debut EP just dropped, Right to Dream. He's also a hip-hop journalist. Rob, great to have you with us. Thank you, Lisa. Also with us is author Terry Woods. She is the author of True to the Game. It is now a major film starring Columbus Short and Vivica Fox. And she's been on the forefront, one of the pioneers of urban fiction. Terry, great to have you with us. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. You Good to see you. Also with us is Charles Tucker Jr. He's a partner in the law firm Tucker Moore Law Group. He's also a criminal defense attorney. Rob, I want to start with you on this. In terms of rap, is this a new age of gangster rap? No, I don't, I don't think it's a new age of gangster rap. I mean, the technology changed, so we're getting it quicker. It's almost like, you know, we see Tay K on the run, the race is out, and then records the video and he's on the run, so you see it. But, you know, this reminds me in a lot of ways of um, Snoop Dogg and murder was the case and what Snoop went through early on. Um, you know, Snoop, you know, it's hard now, it's a little jarring to say it because 20, 25 years later, Snoop is a staple in hip hop and American culture. He's on, you know, TV with Martha Stewart every week. Right, and Super Bowl commercials, so he's super mainstream. But there, there was a time when, you know, the media, when America was saying the same things about Snoop Dogg that they were saying about TK. But Charles Tucker, there, there were some big differences because he's facing a capital murder case in Texas and other possible cases, what, how bad is his legal situation? It's, I mean, it, on a scale of one to 10, it's like a 12, Lisa. Um, you know, as, as a criminal defense attorney, the DAC is already stack, you know, stacked in a lot of regards in regards to the possible charges uh, that are facing him. Not only when, when he was out, you know, but, uh, you know, during that time he went out and committed another crime, you know, and the, the, the chase in and of itself, you know, incorporates charges and additional charges that he could be facing. Just the fact that he broke away from house arrest and led them on this chase. Uh, I mean, I know his bail is is is, is enormous. If if any, I think he's automatically uh, based on the, the seriousness of the charges in Texas. They already got him, in, you know, incarcerated based on those uh, seriousness of those charges. So there is a difference between what Snoop was facing. From a legal standpoint, he's got a much heavier oh, absolutely, it's night heavier and day. deck of charges against him. Night and day, night and, and day. And then, in terms of the, this this aspect of him being a juvenile, because he was 16 when the race he filmed the race, and he was on the run from the U.S. Marshals. They picked him up somewhere in New Jersey, and then now the judge just ruled that he can be tried as an adult. So, 
is that ir irreversible and that means he could face the death penalty? Yeah, well, the, based on the charges that he's facing in Texas, uh, the ruling came down based on the the depravity of the crime and the fact that him being involved in the crime, whether he not he was a shooter, you know, actually go applies to his defense, but it puts him in that in that pool of being subject to subjected to the death penalty. And they, in order for him to be put in that pool, he would first have to be classified that he's able to be tried as an adult. Wow, we're going to talk about more about the charges, but Terry, with this whole love affair that we have, not just in hip-hop culture, but also American culture, with the bad guy, with the criminal, with the guns, with the drugs, with the whole thing. When you first wrote about that and first wrote True to the Game, you were kind of on the cutting edge of that, and people were saying, oh, that's hood fiction for the hood, and now come to find out it's a major motion picture with major stars. I took a lot of heat. I and what were people saying to you? In the beginning? Um... In the beginning, uh, when I first started with True to the Game, I had uh, black bookstores that wouldn't let me in even to do a signing. Um, I couldn't even uh, get a street vendor to put my book on the table because at that time when I started, um, it was Terry McMillan and Elin Harris and B.B. Moore Campbell, and it was a different tone. And so when I came out with True to the Game, I guess maybe because it was so uh, street-driven, um, it was it, it, it was written with slang, and if you didn't understand, if the you didn't streets, know the streets, you couldn't, couldn't understand, even understand it. Right? The book, you couldn't even read it. So, did they think it was a negative representation? <laughs> was that was that part of the problem, or it was just like it just was? They just didn't know how to deal with it. I don't think they knew how to deal with it. You know, I can honestly say that in all of my books, especially with True to the Game, I've always, you know, anybody who's read my work, you know, while it, on one hand. It may seem like I'm exploiting a certain lifestyle. Um, there's also a moral message that I leave as a writer. I've always done that. I've always left the moral message there for them, whether they wanted to get it or not. It is in all of my books. So you don't feel it glamorizes the violence, which, which Rob, that has been a criticism of hip hop since day one. I mean, right. in, in your own EP, Right, right. to Dream, you talk about life on the streets. Right, yeah, you know, except for me as an artist, I, I was never in the streets as an active participant. I had brothers and cousins and all the people around me who, who was doing it, so um, most of, of or all of actually my EP is written from the perspective of somebody who was witnessing it, but never act, actually like involved in, in that sort of way. Um, so it's reporting, you know, from from the streets, at, at, you know, because it's a reality. Like, you know, hip hop is 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 rifled with um, violence because our streets and our communities are there's violence all around us, you know, and and. America loves that story. You know, you love to hear the story again and again. The same reason we watch Scarface over and over and over and over again and, and root for him at the end. Like, there's no, like Terry said, that there's a moral story. At, Scarface dies at the end. Like, everybody conveniently forgets that. Right, part. he's not, <laughs> like, he's not enjoying uh, his, his lifestyle and, uh, you know, for, for years and years and years to come. But do you, do you feel like that, wait, wait, were you a little bit shocked when you saw the, t the uh, Tay K video? Yeah, I was shocked. You know, the real shocking part was at how young he looked. Right. I mean, I mean he, he he was 16 at the time, right? And he looked like he could have been 12. Right. And and with the gun, with the clip in it and the drum, it, you know, it was a lot. I, I think the danger is um, when we watch and we consume this content but take it out of the context that it is. Um, and, and I think what Terry says is right, the, the moral silver lining you know i made the correlation to snoop early and snoop's murder was the case but even snoop's murder was the case song was him rapping a story about how he made a deal with the devil and ultimately regretted it right so there, there was this kind of moral compass even in all of snoop's drama you know um you know that's what i'm waiting for with, with take a musically is, is the other shoe to drop is you're going through this but Man, it ain't all good. It's it's, it's not good by, <laughs> like, not by a long all, shot. Right. We're talking about uh, rap versus reality and the Tay-K case on Street Soldiers. I'm your host, Lisa Evers. We'll be back right after this. He scares me because... Why? He's fearless. Take us into the mindset of the U.S. Marshals and the federal prosecutor, the, the Texas prosecutors, when they see this 16-year-old who they believe murdered someone, making fun of the whole thing with an ankle bracelet on, driving across the country, making videos about it, and, and you know, a lot of gunplay in the video. 
What do they think? You, you, they have to take it seriously um, because to them, it, it's the public at large. They're, they're you know, they're in, you know, took an oath to protect. So when they see the sensationalism, the the parading, so to speak, you know, thumbing their nose up at the justice system, they have to take a strong stance um, because this individual shows a depraved indifference for life in general, uh, and. You know, the aspect, and we were talking during the break about rehabilitation, he doesn't fall into that category, even though, it, it, which is sad in a lot of respects, Lisa, because the question is whether or not he's a reflection of this new generation of hip hop. There, no regard for life, uh, no regard for a future. Because the charges he's facing, it's unclear whether or not he'd ever see the light of day. And, you know, as a defense attorney, I'd like to think there is a defense, and, you know, we could talk about that to some extent, whether or not he was actually the shooter in, in the case in Texas. But while he was out, he savagely beat a 65-year-old elderly man who identified him in a lineup. So that in itself, and then beating um, up a witness, beating uh, up and killing a witness, right. it, allegedly, it, allegedly, you know, and and the charges on its face, Lisa, as as a prosecutor, I would be making sure that I, you know, enforce the law to the highest extent and, and make sure he gets exactly what he's observed. That would be, you know, the justice I'd be seeking, especially for the victims in this case. Terry, in terms, in terms of the type of violence that we see from when you first wrote True to the Game as a novel compared to where we are now, where we do have a lot of teenage, you know, a lot of the shootings are being done, just random shootings, not even like targeted murders like you would see in a you know in the drug in the drug industry in the drug game or whatever do you see changes or do you think it's just gotten younger um i can honestly say that just reflecting um on where i was when i was writing true to the game that was uh 25 years ago uh, no we did not have the kind of violence that we have today we have a different kind of violence um it, just look at Look, looking at Chicago, looking at Chicago, looking at Philadelphia, looking at Detroit, looking at Gary, Indiana, looking at Baltimore. Um, you know, when you step outside of New York, it, it, it becomes a different canvas out there, um, especially in the inner cities. And um, the violence to me is extreme. Rob, what, Rob, what about that? Because the, in, in terms of the generational thing, because you see, you know, we talk about it in hip hop too, the different, the focus and the, the styles of music. And we're just coming out of this period where people are like, well, look, we have all these conscious rappers and we have artists talking about serious issues. And then you have the, the guy that's the hottest thing right now is a teenage, teenager, right. you, well, know, you know, accused, the, of, accused of very serious murder. I, I remember when it was Puff and Diddy and the shiny suit era and, and, and people just got tired of that so we had to come right back to DMX which was something a little more rough a little more street so you know I think we're, we're in this era now where rappers are, are more emotional more in touch with their feelings able to be way more expressive and you know that that's the style and it's kind of getting saturated on that side of the game so when some somebody like Tay K comes out and it's just raw and it's street and it's in your face it sticks out because there's not much like it going back to Bobby murder case, it's like the, the law enforcement, and this was from several different people that I had interviewed and talked with about the case, they said that this was with, with the teens, because he was he was at 19, I think, when the uh, when he caught the case, is the, the, the shootings were recreational. It's like you hear all these shootings and no one's actually getting killed. You know, people are getting wounded and there's people getting caught by stray bullets, but he's, he, they were like, it's almost like they don't really want to shoot, but they feel like they have to because that's the image. Charles, what about that? It, it's the, again, the image versus reality, you know, and to them, this is their reality. This is what they need to do to establish street cred. And we never used to hear anything about that. You know, a street cred is how we lived our lives. But to them, this is what they need to do. You know, if you look at the, the TK video, the, the guns and, you know, you know, stuff a, a normal 17-year-old shouldn't have to experience. 
you know, right. you wonder like, well, you know, what kind of home life did he have? You know, you know, th and then you really f you uncover what kind of home life he had. His father was in jail and his mother wasn't really there. So there was really never an opportunity for him to even have a chance, Lisa. To have not one not one adult there that was basically trying to trying to keep him on the on the straight straight and narrow right. or to provide some good you know culturalization as to what he could actually become what opportunities he could actually pursue you know and uh, and that's my point too I'm sorry just if, if he ends up beating this case and has the opportunity to then he's going to be a superstar redemption right? in hip hop again you know looking at Snoop again this, these were a lot of things that people said about Snoop early on it was a lot of things that people said about Jeezy and his ties to BMF early on you know T.I. Right. got into trouble early on 50 Cent and these guys have had amazing hip hop careers if we if Tupac if we strip all of their catalogs from hip hop, we're losing some of the greats. And not only that, guys who go back to their neighborhood and employ other people from their neighborhood, you know, the DJ, then we take them on the road, my manager, my road manager, right. all come from the same hoods and people get more opportunities through hip hop. So if he gets on, off of this case, take a there's a chance that there's a redemption story here. I, I don't want to write him off just so quickly. You know what I'm you saying? You know, I don't want to. I don't want to write anybody off, and and definitely not him. But Terry, what about with the image? Because as yeah, as a writer, really... as a creative person, it's very hard. And you know, as much as people say, well, looks don't shouldn't matter, and what the person looks like shouldn't matter. The truth is, even more so now, I think looks matter. This... So you look at him, and he to me, he looks like. A star sweet of a teen kid. sitcom, so like right. he should be in some high school, should, yeah, could you know, high school sitcom somewhere right. with some cute girls, you know, in the hallway by the lockers. Right, that's what I, I say. I could take him home. We could go do Cub Scouts and but, go tenting. But what? But what do you? You know, what does that do in terms of his popularity? Do you think? Because you got that baby face, and then you got the gun and all the stuff Lisa, that that Charles is, was talking this about. This is the thing, you know. I didn't see Snoop Dogg doing anything, you know. I just heard him rapping back then. I didn't see Jay-Z stab Un. I just heard Jay-Z rapping and I heard about him paying him off. I did not see, um, who, who do you want to name? I did not see their violence. And and so an alleged violence. In I didn't all those cases. see their alleged violence. I didn't see them doing bad things. I heard about it. Like it's different. I didn't see Bobby Schmurder. I heard. I actually saw Tay K today. And Tay K, he he scares me a little bit. You know, he scares me because why? He's fearless. And but at his 16, energy, a lot of people fearless. are fearless. Well, you know what? You didn't then do something when you were 16 that now you go. I did. Oof. Thank God I, did I, I, a lot I of things when I was 50, uh, when I was 16, Lisa, but I didn't hurt people. Okay. And so that's the difference. And so I think that when you are out there and you put yourself out there and you do these things, it, there's an impact of me actually visualizing that you have to win me back over. Now these young kids and the younger generation, he don't have to worry about them. They're gonna follow him forever. Is there some kind of way to defend somebody like that when the video's out there like that and, and the track record is not so good. Right. Well, I mean, to go to Rob's point, you would have to really hone in on the fact that he is so young and that there is an opportunity. You know, even though he's uh, possibly involved in these serious crimes, his track record is not long. You know, right. he doesn't have a long criminal record. Um, so you can always make the argument and there's, you know, plea negotiations that could be involved in, you know, that he has an opportunity or there is an opportunity to rehabilitate him. All right, well, help. we're going to be following this case. Uh, definitely, I want, I want to thank our panel uh, for this episode of Street Soldiers, Rob Markman, hip-hop artist. Check out his debut EP, Right to Dream. He's also a very well-known hip-hop journalist. Rob, great to have you with us on the show. Thank you for having me, Lisa. Thank you. Also with us is Terry Woods. She's the author of True to the Game. you got to check out the film. Now starring, uh, now out starring Columbus Short and Vivica Fox. Terry, great to have you. Thank you. We really appreciate it. Charles Tucker Jr. Awesome to have you and thanks for breaking down all the uh, legal things and, and legal issues here for us as always. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. And uh, thank you everybody for watching. Remember, follow me Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at Lisa Evers Snap, Lisa Evers Live and use your mind. It's your best weapon. I hope it's your only weapon. I'm Lisa Evers. Let's push for peace. <laughs>